I'd like to welcome you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible as we come to Luke chapter 15. As we come into Luke chapter 15, just to lay the background for this, let me remind you that chapter and verse divisions in your Bible are not necessarily inspired by God. Now, I'm certainly thankful that they are there because if they were not there, you would be all day literally just finding where we are in Luke chapter 15. But sometimes in order to get the context of a passage, even at the beginning of a chapter, we need to go back to the previous chapter so that we can get the background to what is going on here. Uh, in Luke chapter 14, we saw that Jesus gave a parable of a great supper. And uh, also in the end of that chapter, that he had talked about the cost of discipleship. And uh, as he did that, it seemed to attract the publicans and the singers and made them anxious to hear him. Let's just read the introductory verses to this chapter today, and we will give you a little bit of, of uh, background on them, a little bit of thought on them today. So Luke chapter 15, and in verse 1, it says, Then drew near unto him, speaking of Jesus, all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. So as we come into these verses, we see here that the publicans and the singers come around him. And the reason why they come around him is they want to hear him. They are intrigued by what he is that they hear from him as he proclaims these various truths of God to them. And uh, they come, they're anxious to hear him. They want to hear uh, what he is that he has to say. And you know, as we think about that and how it applies to our own lives, friends, you know, the, as you look at the Pharisees, we know that obviously they had the, where the publicans and the singers came, but the Pharisees and the scribes uh, had the, the wrong heart attitude. Um, when you look at these publicans and singers here, it says that they were anxious to hear the Lord Jesus Christ. They were anxious to hear what it was that he had to say. Does that describe you, friend, as you open up the Word of God each day and as you're involved in the reading of the Word of God is your desire that which is said in Psalm 119. I can't remember the exact verse right now, but it says, Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Are you anxious to hear God, anxious to hear what he is? that he would say to you that you might be able to apply it to your life. Is that the mentality that you have as you come into the house of God? When the doors of the house of God are open and you assemble together to worship the Lord, is it your desire? Are you anxious to hear what it is that God would say to you? Are you like Samuel of old in 1 Samuel 3 when he said, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Sometimes, we can be at the place that we do not hear God. We do not hear his voice because we've already made up our minds that we are not going to do what it is that he wants us to do. So these publicans and sinners were intrigued by what Jesus had said in Luke 14, and they wanted to hear more of his preaching. They wanted to hear more of what it is that, you, that, that he had to say. And I hope that you have that same hunger for the Word of God, that same desire to hear the Word of God proclaimed and to allow the Holy Spirit of God to minister to you as you hear the, the Bible. And we see uh, as we come into this that the publicans and the singers were open to hear him. They desired to hear what it was that he said. But then notice in verse 2, it says, And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receive us singers and eateth with them. The Pharisees and the scribes did not understand the message of Jesus Christ. They did not approve of the message that Jesus preached. And as a result of that, they bring this charge against him in verse 2, this man eateth, uh, receive us singers and eateth with them. Let me remind you, first of all, as we think about these Pharisees and scribes, that during his ministry on earth, Jesus had way more trouble with the religious crowd than he did with the lost. The vast majority of the heartache and difficulty that Jesus experienced 
during his public ministry on this earth came from the religious crowd. And here in these verses, they are upset because Jesus had fellowship with lost men and that he even ate meals with them. Now, I want you to note Jesus did do that, but nowhere at any time did he ever compromise on his message. The reason why he had those meals, the reason why he did fellowship with them was so that he could share the truth of the word of God to them. He desired to see them saved. These Pharisees would never have been around. They would have never received these singers and ate with them because they would have been uh, contaminated by contact of these lost men. However, Jesus loved them and he had a desire to reach them. Jesus knew that in order to reach men, he had to love them. Friends, I don't know about you, but I'm glad that Jesus Christ came into this world to demonstrate the love of God for lost sinners. In Romans chapter 5 and in verse 8, it says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Friends, the accusation that the Pharisees and the scribes brought is this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And to them, this was horrible. But to us, oh, what a blessing that is. Aren't you glad that he receiveth sinners? Because, friends, that gives you and I hope because we can be saved. And what happens in the remainder of this chapter is Jesus communicates three parables to the Pharisees and the scribes. You say, well, how do you know that he spoke these parables to the Pharisees and the scribes? Well, it's easy. Listen to verse 2. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And then go to verse 3. And he spake this parable unto them, saying. Who's the them there? The Pharisees and the scribes. So the three parables that Jesus proclaims here are to the Pharisees and the scribes that we're going to look at over these next number of days. But notice, before we get into these parables, what happened here. The Pharisees and the scribes did not approve of what Jesus was doing and what Jesus was saying. And as a result of that, they murmured against him. Friend, let me encourage you today. Pastor, let me encourage you today. If you get some people that are murmuring against you, murmuring against your ministry, you're in good company. They murmured against the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we seek to move ahead for God and by grace do what it is what God, that God has called us to do, it will always stir up the old man. It will always stir up the religious crowd. And the result of that so many times is murmuring. So be careful. Make sure that you do not find yourself in the crowd of murmurers. These three parables here are going to be a figging answer to the Pharisees. It reveals the blessed story of God's love for sinners. And in each of these parables, we're going to see this truth to these singers. He, he's going to teach truth to singers, but the hard-hearted men, Jesus told them a series of three parables here. And in this chapter that many people call God's lost and found, Jesus reminds them that every life is valuable to the Lord. Friend, your life is valuable to the Lord. He cares about you. He desires to save you. He desires to rescue you from your sin. Tomorrow we'll get into this first parable, the parable of the lost sheep. And in that parable, we're going to see that Jesus shows these Pharisees how God feels about the lost. And in doing so, he also tells us some things about what the good shepherd does for the sheep. And we can rejoice in that truth because as we look at this parable that Jesus spoke to those hard-hearted Pharisees, we also see what it is that the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, does for us. Friends, he's a good shepherd that gave his life for the sheep. He is the great shepherd that lives for his sheep. And we're going to see that he is also the chief shepherd who one day is coming again for his sheep. So let me challenge you today. Don't be a Pharisee and a scribe. Don't be one who murmurs. Don't be one that finds fault. But rather, 
be one who is eager to hear and eager to follow what it is that God says. Have a great day.